five, four, three, two, one, zero. Passed All off. Running. Lift off. We have a lift off. That didn't work out. What's up, guys? Engineer Jules here. Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be kicking it with the new guys and we're going to be going over some basics on how to work a DC lab bench power supply. So about a year ago, I made a video about the TacLife Lab Bench Power Supply, and it's actually my first and only Lab Bench Power Supply. Of course, school has different kinds, so I've used those, but this one has been my personal, and I've used it for uh, over a year now, and it's actually held up pretty well. So I'm gonna leave a description for this one. If you wanna try it out, go ahead. I can vouch for it because I've used it with no problems, but let's go ahead and get started on how this baby works. Now, I've gotten some comments. I've gotten some comments in the YouTubes and um, a lot of people are confused about what this is. I know, I know it's a DC lab bench power supply. The name says it all, but some of us are still confused. What, what is DC power? What, what does that do? Well, my friends, today we're going to be going over some of those basic things. And let's just start off by saying um, it provides DC power. Now, what is power? It says it right here in the lab bench. Power is equal to voltage times current. Now, right here we have voltage and current and when you combine the two you can get variants you can get different types of power so that is what where this is coming from and it mainly provides dc voltage to small circuits small electronics that you have in your house uh, i wouldn't correct i wouldn't recommend this to larger electronics that uh, require dc voltage uh, definitely get something heavier duty than this. So let's start with the basics on how to use this DC power supply. First, we have our on button. Of course, uh, we wanna make sure that that is on. And then once you have that, you have the ability to control your voltage. Uh, in my case, it's up to 31 volts. And this uh, bottom knob right here allows you to control your current and in this case, I believe you're able to control it up to 5.1 amps. And you can also control how finely you want to adjust this by uh, pressing on this. Uh, in DC power supply language, this is called coarse and fine setting. So the fine setting, you, you can go ahead and adjust it in terms of tens of millivolts. And then in the course, you can just adjust it in whole volts. Uh, in this case, let's go to five volts. We're gonna start low as uh, we should if we were beginner electronic hobbyist or uh, initially starting our electrical engineering degree. Another thing I wanna point out here is this output button. This output button allows you to set your settings on the DC power supply without actually outputting any current or voltage to the thing that you're trying to supply, to the thing you're trying to power. And this is actually not a standard feature in every single DC power supply. So I do highly recommend that if you have the option to get one, definitely get one that has an output button. So let's go ahead and connect it. You can either connect it through the banana plugs that comes included in the box, or you can also connect it through these little screw knobs where you can just wrap uh, your wires uh, around it and connect it that way. So you got options here. So let's go ahead and attach a load to this power supply so we can see how it actually works. Now, here we have our load is gonna be a so sort of a uh, big LED. I'm gonna leave the current limited at 80 milliamps and hopefully that is enough. I forget um, what is the actual ratings for this LED, but um, three volts is actually only gonna output at 35 milliamps, which is pretty cool. And as you can see at this setting, uh, once I push that output button, it doesn't go all the way to 80 milliamps. And some of you might be wondering why. The reason is uh, 
is because this right here is only a current limiter. That means that it's like, it's more like a safety net than a controlling knob. So what this allows you to do is to say, all right, we have three volts and whatever I plug into as my output, as my load, I don't want it to go more than 80 milliamps. That is exactly what you're telling this power supply to do. Uh, so actually when I turn this output on, uh, the LED bulb is only drawing 34, 35 milliamps. So in this case, it doesn't even hit the limit, which is why this number goes down as soon as you press the output button. However, you can um, try to test to see if you reach that limit. So let's go ahead and bump this up to four volts. At four volts, uh, you're definitely gonna be drawing more current from the LED bulb. And let's see if we hit that current limit. So at four volts and 80 milliamps, you can see that the power supply is hitting that current limit. So it is not uh, letting it go past that, which means that the LED bulb is taking less voltage. Uh, this is following Ohm's law, guys. Ohm's law is voltage equals current times resistance. And no matter what you're trying to do, you can't go around Ohm's law. If you're trying to increase the voltage, you have to increase the current. If you're trying to increase the current, you have to increase the voltage. That is just how it goes. Or you have to lower the resistance value in your uh, whole circuitry. Now let's go ahead and uh, show you what I'm talking about here. Your resistor value. Uh, right now I'm going to be using a 220 ohm resistor as a current limiter for this LED bulb right here. And as you can see here, our resistor is doing a very fine job at limiting the current here. And you would want to use resistors when you have power supplies that provide uh, different types of outputs. So for example, let's say your LED can't take five volts straight from the power supply because it'll break and then create a short or something. So you want to go ahead and put a l current limiting resistor or just a resistor and go ahead and put that output. And as you can see, we have five volts, but we're only drawing eight milliamps. And that is all because we have a resistor here that is keeping this little LED bulb in check without like burn itself out. If you remember when we were putting this five volts straight without the resistor, it was um, drawing way more current. And that is because LEDs really don't have a way to limit how much current they're putting in through. So as you can see here, without the resistor, we are just being stopped by the current um, resisting limit through the power supply. If we didn't have a limit here, we would definitely burn out the LED bulb. And just for fun, let me go ahead and show you guys what something like that will look like. So, you know, let's say there is no current limit. 0.8 amps is a lot of current for this little LED bulb. And we were just to put, let's say we're gonna put a, LED bulb onto a five volt power supply that didn't have any current limiting settings. Uh, let's see what that would look like. And as you can see, the LED bulb is actually extremely bright. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see the current dropping. And this is actually the LED bulb burning out. The last thing I wanted to point out is your plus, ground, and minus. For the most part, when you're using your DC power supply, you're gonna wanna use the positive and the negative as your return because voltage and current is always relative to its neutral. If you attach this plug right here to the ground, you're gonna get uh, some different complications and that is actually uh, a topic for another day, but just keep in mind that it is going to be relative to earth ground and not to your minus and it's not going to it's not going to work as you intend it to work. So that's about all I have for you guys today. I wanted to keep this information short and simple for those of us just starting out with DC power supplies. But stay tuned because I will be posting more videos about electrical engineering and different projects that I'm going to be working on. So until next time, you guys take it easy and stay safe. Peace. You can make these motors go pretty quick. Yeah.